Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is time for our final review session when it comes to equations. And today we're doing very, very special ones. Literal equations, they are literally the best equations. Um, so far, we've done one and two step equations, multiple step equations, uh, equations that have variables on multiple sides. Uh, let's see, we've done proportions. Um, all different kinds of equations which lead to this. All of those things that we've done are building to literal equa equations. So why are literal equations literally the best equation? It's because they have multiple ways of answering them. They have multiple different ways of coming to an answer depending on what you're looking for. Uh, for instance, when I leave my house every morning to drive to Lincoln, I have my normal route that I take to get there. But if there's traffic or if there's an accident, I have a couple of different alternate routes that I know depending on where I want to, like where I want my destination to be, I know that there's a couple of different ways that I can get there. Literal equations are the same way. You will start out with an equation that looks familiar, but depending on where you need to end up, it's going to determine what you do. So one equation can become multiple things. And literal equations, if you're writing this down in your notebook, are just equations with multiple variables. Now let's start with something that is simple, something that we recognize. So if I give you this equation, 2x minus 5 equals 13, and I ask you to solve for x, the first thing that we would do is I would go over here, I would add 5 to both sides, plus 5, 13 plus 5, which gives me 18. And then I bring down my 2x, because those cancel out. 2x equals 18. And then I divide both sides by 2. And I get a nice answer of x equals, oops, x equals, like make it look a little bit more like an equal sign, 9. Beautiful. So with this equation, it's a two-step equation. I have one variable, but in order to find the value of that variable, I've got two steps that I need to follow. Now with literal equations, it's going to look similar, but in a literal equation, you're going to have multiple variables. And depending on what variable you're trying to solve for, that's going to determine what you do. Now, I gave you this literal equation that looks very, very similar to 2x minus 5 equals 13. I just replaced, I replaced the 2 with a, the negative 5 with b, and 13 with c. With literal equations, they have some similarities with typical equations. Like for instance, they both use inverse operations to isolate the variable. Remember, inverse operations, we're using the opposite. So I start out with a negative 5 on one side. I add positive 5 to both sides. I'm multiplying x by 2 in order to isolate that variable to get the x by itself. I'm going to do the inverse. I divide both sides by 2. So with, <clears throat> with a literal equation, I'm doing the same thing. I'm following those same operations. It's just that when I do, I'm not going to end up with a nice, uh, a nice number like x equals 9. I'm going to end up, instead of x equals 9, I'm going to end up with something like x equals an expression. So the literal equation, the biggest difference is that it doesn't simplify nicely because there's multiple variables. I don't know what the value of A is. I don't know what the value of B is. I don't know what the value of C is. But what I do know is that I can, if I want to try and isolate X, I'm starting out with a negative B, opposite of negative B. Oops, I need to get back to my drawing tool. The opposite of negative B is positive B. So if I add b to both sides, b minus b, 
B minus B, those uh, cancel each other out. So I'm left, instead of 13 plus five, I'm left with C plus B. And then if I'm still solving for X in order to get rid of this A, I'm really multiplying A times X. I'm going to do the inverse. I'm gonna divide both sides by A. So what I'm left with, instead of X equals nine, I'm left with X equals C plus B all over A. So instead of being left with a number, I'm left with X equaling expression. I'm really, I start out with an equation. I end with a different equation, but it's a different equation that's using those same variables. And again, it all depends on what variable you're solving for. I could take this same equation and try and say, solve for B or solve for A. I would follow the same steps. I would follow the inverse operations to isolate the variable, but depending on what variable I'm solving for, that's going to determine the steps that I follow. Um, let's go with, let's do a little bit of practice. So literal equations practice, we're gonna solve for, solve for X unless otherwise, unless I tell you otherwise. Um, I wanted to start with some familiar literal equations. You may not have referred to them in the past as literal equations, but they are. So for instance, let's try one that you might have seen. A equals L W. This is the formula for area of a rectangle. Pretty simple. Uh, in the past, when you're told, all right, what's the area of this rectangle? You know that it is the length times the width. And depending on, so like if I bring up my, I've got my phone right here, I've got, if I wanted to find the area, I would measure the length, I would measure the width, and then I would multiply those two numbers together to get the surface area of my phone. But what if I know my area, I know the length, but I need to figure out the width. I'm going to follow those same, I'm gonna follow those same steps, I'm gonna follow SADMAP and if I know the length, but I'm trying to find the width, the operation that's being performed right here is L times W. I'm going to divide both sides. I'm going to make it look more like an L. Divide both sides by L. Those cancel out. So what I'm left with, my width is equal to the area divided by the length. Let's try another one. What about, what about this one? Area equals pi r squared. This is the formula to find the area of a circle. Now, if I know, if I'm, if I know the area, but I wanna figure out what the radius of the circle is. Remember the radius, if I have a circle, start with my center point, work my way out. The radius is the distance from the center of the circle out to one of, out to its edge. So if I want to figure out what the radius is, I have to first, since I'm multiplying r by pi, I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Those cancel out. So I'm left with A over pi equals R squared. I can take this a step further. This is something that we haven't really worked with since the beginning of the year. But if I want to figure out what, the, what R is, the opposite of squaring something, is to find the square root. So I do the square root on both sides. And then I can 
get rid of, I can erase this. So r equals the square root of a divided by pi. We're not going to be working with that just yet, but I want you to understand that you've seen literal equations. You have seen them a lot. You have seen them since like fourth, fifth, sixth grade, whenever you were working with, uh, with stuff in geometry. These are all literal equations. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is after you watch this video, at the very end of it, I'm going to have a slide with six different literal equations. I want you to choose three of them. No, you guys are better than that. I want you to choose four of them. Work those out on a piece of paper. You're going to solve each of them for x. Each one has multiple variables, but they have at least one x variable. I want you to try working through those on a sheet of paper. Take a picture of that. Send that to me. There's also going to be a short quiz on another day that where you are given a literal equation and it's going to ask you to solve for a certain variable and then you're going to have four choices of which one is correct. Uh, it's not going to be anything major, but I really just want to see that you understand how to solve a literal equation. It might even be the same literal equation just asking you to solve it a few different ways. I could take a equals pi r squared or I can take a equals length times width and solve that for length instead of width. Or you can take any number of literal equations and solve them different ways depending on what you're given. So with that in mind, I want you to use this time to practice because this right here is going to lead directly into what we do next. We're, we took this time as like kind of a pause of we were talking about slope, we were talking about graphing. I wanted to take this this time, these uh, past like week and a half, two weeks, as a pause to really like hit equations again. Uh, we're gonna circle back to equations again, but I really would like to move on from this to slope to what we're gonna be doing next, picking up kind of where we left off when last I saw you. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, if you have any questions, please come find me. Don't just put something in Google Classroom saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Come find me. Email, text me, uh, any, anything. I really am here to help. I miss you guys and I do want to help. So have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Don't forget to be awesome.